Hey guys, Psalm 119, interesting verse. It says in verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Now to the ill-informed, you could read that and think, well, I was passive and apathetic and then I you know, God afflicted me and then, then he straightened me out. That's not what it says. It says, before I, I was afflicted, I, I went astray. Going astray produces affliction. Now, the good news about uh, those kinds of things is that it ends up, you, you know, you, you get stung. It's, I think about Jonah. He got afflicted. He was going astray before he was thrown overboard on the boat. Uh, he was disobeying God. So then it's not like, thank you, God, that I'm, that I, I'm afflicted. Now I'm going to return to you because I'm afflicted. I don't think God wants followers that go to him um, because he's afflicting them. You know, my dad, my dad, my stepdad that raised me, he, he just, he was, he was a disciplinarian. He was kind. He, he had my best, best interest at heart. As I look back now, as I've developed as an adult, I realize that he did the best he could, and he, and, and he, but he, he never uh, punished me to hurt me. He disciplined me to correct me. And, uh, you know, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. And sometimes the worst stuff in our life is, is, is self-inflicted affliction, self-inflicted misery from our own sin. And so what I sense about this verse, there's a lot to this. There's a lot of depth to it. Um, he, he became alert when he started to realize he was going through trouble and, it, and, it, and, it, and in that moment, you know, he kept his word. And, and I just believe God's keeping power and his faithfulness will, will help us. And whatever affliction you're going to, through, remember, many are the afflictions of the righteous, it says in an earlier psalm, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. Even if you read in Corinthians about Paul's thorn in the flesh, you know, it was, it, the, where, where did it come from? It didn't come from God. It was a messenger of Satan. Now, there's some theology that believes that Satan is on God's leash and so forth, Satan is temporarily the small g God of this world. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says that he is the God of this world, and he's deceived the hearts of the unbelieving. One ver another verse says the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Now, I'm not completely 100% clear theologically on all the reasons why that is. It's, I think it's because Adam and Eve were given authority over the earth, and then they, they forfeited it and committed high treason. And Satan usurped that authority, and now he temporarily is the God of this world. Now, people would say, well, didn't Jesus destroy the works of the devil? Yes, but it also says the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet, and that he'll make the enemies to be a footstool under his feet. So they're still, you know, we're in the world. Look, it's fallen. And when people say, oh, God has the whole, uh, all of it under control, well, I could kind of understand that in a certain dimension of his sovereignty, but on the other hand, um, the wars and the rumors of wars, God's not playing games with humanity. He sets some things in motion that because he's, he's faithful to his word, he's honor bound to keep it. He doesn't change. You know, some people say, God, there's nothing God cannot do. Well, he cannot lie and he cannot sin. So he can't lie. He's not a man that he would lie. So... Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of opening up a big, you know, bunch of stuff to think about. But this says right here, it says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And so, I mean, I've been through situations where, uh, you know, I, I've, 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 been in, I've been in passivity. And the circumstances of life kind of <laughs> compelled me to fight the good fight of faith. <laughs> And, but what do I, to what do I attribute the credit for that? I, I'm, I'm going to attribute the credit to, uh, I want to, your word is true. And so I, and I want to keep your word. It says, 
Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Father, I pray you help us. Like James chapter 1 says, we would be doers of your word and not just hearers only. God, I pray anybody that's going through affliction, maybe they went astray, then they're afflicted, I pray they return. In fact, I know when I was backslidden and I went astray, and then I was afflicted by the results of my own sin, but then you drew me back through that cycle. And I don't know what cycle people are in right now or what's going on, but God, I pray they would return to the shepherd and guardian of their souls, the faithful, true King of Kings, Jesus, and that you would reach out with your nail-scarred hands and, and penetrate through the darkness and the uncertainty and the insecurity and draw people back. Somebody's watching right now. You've been away from the Lord. You've gone astray. You've been afflicted. But man, just obey the word. Don't forsake assembly. Find a good church and get in it. Get back to God. Get back in the Bible. I mean, this is God's love gift to you. He said, uh, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word in Jesus' name. Amen.